in 2012, uh, I was given this log. It came from a job site. It was cut down and it was dead. And it was free and I never turned down anything that's free. Um, and coincidentally, uh, a friend of my son had just got this chainsaw mill and he agreed to come slab it up for uh, half the log and it worked out perfectly because no way I'd been able to get it off the trailer if it wasn't cut. I ended up with four nice slabs and the uh, sapwood on the edge. I uh, stacked it in the yard under tarps because I didn't have a shed built. And then we built a shed and I moved the dang things again. And in 2015, I built this table. And that was the first time I was glad I accepted the log because it's just been a beast moving those slabs around and keeping them all this time. But now it is 2019. My last two big slabs of white oak. I've got a project for them. I'm gonna get them out. They're incredibly heavy. Um, just flop them on the ground and rough cut them to length and that'll make them a lot more manageable. So new project. Gonna build a dining table for my son. If it wasn't for my impending antiquity and the fact that gravity is stronger now than it was even just five years ago and the fact that the bottom of these slabs was really rough which really messed with my rolling program and the heat index of about 172 this wouldn't have even been worth filming these boards just would have appeared in the shop but if you uh take pleasure in watching somebody struggle here you go this is for you i gotta get some gloves before i destroy my hands Got it out flat on the ground. We're going to cut it from 12 feet to about 8 foot and a half, and that's going to make a huge difference. And I might even rip it with the skill saw right where it sits. All I, all I need to do is get it up off the dirt. We're good, good to go. This cat enjoys a good struggle. Um, clear bluebird day, everything's going well, no problems. She's nowhere to be found. I make one wrong cut on the table saw, there she is making fun of me. Couple of beads of sweat rolling down my forehead, a little grunt. There she is, looking at me like I'm some sort of fool. I got the slab marked at nine foot eight. Table's gonna be nine foot. That gives me a little bit extra. Um, I'll cut those two ends off. That'll make it a little lighter. And then I'm gonna run the saw down the middle because the middle is hard and it's all split up. And that should give me two boards that I can actually pick up and carry and bring in a shop. And after we do that, I'll get the other slab out and we'll go do the same thing with it while I got all this junk out. been nice if I'd have had a big piece and I could have just made the table top one big piece but 
that wasn't going to work for one thing even complete they weren't wide enough and then the middle section was kind of hardwood and it's all split up and then there's a lot of bow so if you try to flatten out a big wide piece you're going to lose a good bit of the wood so I'm going to rip these up into smaller widths and then I'm going to run them through the surface planer both sides until I get something reasonably that looks like a board and then I can joint the edges straight because I'll have a flat or a relatively flat surface and then we'll shuffle them around and glue them back together and then we'll run a, uh, I'll make a router jig to uh, flatten out the top completely so got a few steps involved here and everyone is hard because they're so freaking heavy okay so I'm ready to start cutting um, I've nailed a straight edge down the side this is my live edge. I only need two live edges on the table, but I'm going to keep all four for now because I'm not sure which planks I'm going to use in which order. Um, first thing I'm going to do is, so this guide is not parallel with the live edge. It's parallel with the saw cut I made because the, the live edge is not straight. First thing I'm going to do is cut off an inch and a half off that far side. That was the hardwood, and it's all split and bad. And what I'm trying to do is just get some weight off of these things. They're kind of at the limit of what I can safely push through the table saw. So first cut will just be an inch and a half off the edge. And I have to hold the, the end on the feed side of the table, but on the off feed side, it'll slide onto my workbench, so that won't be a problem. I'm just going to have to pick it up and manhandle this end. I had it on this roller a second ago and it fell down, kind of scared the crap out of me. So let's go. combination of how much these boards weigh and how rough they are and how twisted they are they really are challenging to push through the saw um, you would think that you know the top of the saw is cast iron and smooth you think these boards would just slide along but not to be they were testing me with everything I had to get at least the first two cuts through after that it gets a little lighter and a little easier uh, this was a real workout Next stop is the thickness planer. I ran them all through. Um, started out about two and a quarter average and finished up with about one and three quarter average. Uh, theoretically, we would have gone to the joiner first and gotten all the twist out of all these boards, but I don't have a joiner that big and I wasn't gonna do it by hand. So we're gonna make do with this. It's gonna be okay. It's pretty repetitive and not much fun to watch. So I just have everything speeded up here and we're just looking at doing one board and not all of them. All right, the first slab is all cut up and dre roughly dressed down and it will give me about, I'm gonna have to cut off some more of this. It'll give me about 28 inches of tabletop, which is a little disturbing because we're shooting for 48. So if the other two also give me the same amount, that's going to leave eight inches left over for the four legs and all the bands. And that's not enough. And I want the legs to match. The bands really don't matter because they don't show. Um, these two slabs are a little straighter, so I may get more out of them. 
but we'll see. I can buy white oak, but it won't match it because of the bug holes. This is distinctive white oak, and this is all I have. There is no more. I got a new ruler, and it's pretty cool because you can read the numbers on it. All right, this is the tabletop. This is uh, four feet wide. Um, the first three match from out the tree. The third three match from out of the tree. This pair matches from out of the tree. And I'll need one more little piece, which, per, which won't match. Um, I'm going to have to clean up all these joints, and I'll probably glue them together in pairs and run them through the thickness planer again because they are now one and three quarter inches and the goal for the tabletop will be one and a half or maybe a tad less so I have a little bit of, a little bit of material to remove so if I glue them up in pairs it makes it easy um, so it'd be one two three four okay glued up the first pair yesterday um, the top board is uh, with two parallel sides it's easy I can just run it through the table saw and pretty much get the sides square the bottom board has a live edge so I had to square it up using a little power plane and so today the two boards I have both have a uh, parallel sides. so after they run through the um, table saw and just a little bitty bit is removed it's pretty much a good fit these are, these are <coughs> These are easier than the ones with the live edge. So one more pair this morning. Second pair is glued up. And these are actually pretty easy because even though it's a big hunk of wood, it's nine and a half feet long. So they're a little limber and I can pull them up tight. Now when I go to be gluing two pairs together, they're not going to be limber at all and I'm going to have to get the joint pretty accurate or they won't pull up. But for now, everything's good. I've done a lot of this over the last few days and I have a lot more to go um, because these boards are too long for me to deal with on my joiner planer. I'm joining them with a hand planer. Um, the blades are really sharp. It cuts really fast. And it's a matter of playing and looking, playing and looking, playing and looking until you get a fit that is acceptable to you. And then open them up. I'm using epoxy glue with a little thickener and some sawdust to give it a little brown color and gluing them up third glue up is complete and now I think I'm going to run the three glue ups and the other two boards through the planer it's my last chance to use the power planer after this they're going to be too wide and then I'm going to attempt to glue um, I got a pair that I can glue to this pair and a single that I can glue to the other pair and they'll be a little harder because I have to get a straight line with the hand plane instead of the table saw. Let's see. The little planing operation was interrupted by a little shower. That's okay. We got the first three planed so I can work on uh, gluing the next pairs together. First two pairs side by side. Got a little bit of a bulge in the middle I'll have to remove with the plane. And there's a little bit of a twist. It's like 3 sixteenths. Um, and that's why I've been saying from the beginning I'm going to have to flatten the top of this table with a, with a router jig. These boards are just so heavy and so awkward and twisted. It's a, pretty happy with just 3 sixteenths. So these two 2x4s two that are clamped down are really, really parallel. So I'm using them like winding sticks in addition to uh, holding everything up. So now it's just a matter of uh, running a little hand plane. My little Bosch, which has some sharp blades in it, it cuts this stuff really well. Until I get an acceptable fit, and we'll glue up this pair. So typically, I put the boards together and put a bunch of pencil marks to kind of let me know what I need to do. And then I unstack them and get them where I can get to them with the plane. And then get completely confused about what the pencil marks mean or what they're for. And just kind of go by memory. And if you do this two or three times, the boards will actually fit sooner or later. We've got the joint fitting pretty good. Um, laying reasonably flat on the 2x4s. It has a little twist in that corner. 
And when I tighten the clamps up, it stays pretty flat. So I'm calling it good. We're going to glue these two pairs together. So ordinarily when I glue up some boards, I just pick them up and move them to the side and make room to glue up some more. But I can't pick it up. It's too heavy. So apparently it's going to be like one glue a day. So yesterday I glued the sixth board on this side. And we have one more board to glue on this side. And then we'll put them together and see how big a piece I need to rip to put in the middle to try to get an average of 48 inches. Um, I didn't use the power planer to straighten out this edge. I tried using a router with a straight edge. I have this aluminum tow board that's pretty straight. So this morning I glued the sixth board on this side of the table and the third board on that side of the table and it's going to come out exactly 48 inches plus or minus by the time I um, straighten these two edges to glue the whole thing together so that's good stuff and so far I've been able to keep the twisted boards and the warp boards all semi under control I'm gonna have a fairly flat tabletop I doubt if I'll have to take off a quarter inch with a, a router jig to completely flatten it maybe not even that much so good stuff so far I kind of jumped back and forth between using the router and using the uh, plane to get the edges right um, the, the router seems like it would just be idiot proof you just got it along there but it's far from that all kind of things can go wrong and usually do um, for one thing my router base is not totally concentric and my bit was not long enough to go all the way through the wood so when I lowered the bit if I don't have the router facing the right direction, the two cuts don't line up. Um, it's real easy to rock the router a little bit, and it just takes a huge gouge all of a sudden. It's easy if you're not paying attention to let the router jump up on the guide because mine is just barely an eighth of an inch thick on that edge. And it just it seems like you'd get a perfect joint, but you don't. Um, so sometimes I use it and sometimes I have to go behind it with the power plane um, to, to get a better fit. Um, the good thing about the power plane is even though it's got a little guide that should hold it perpendicular to the face of the um, board, I still can apply pressure and lean it one way or the other a little bit. So if two boards are fitting and they're wanting to curl up, I can... Uh, I can change the angle a little bit of the fit and have them lay down better. But in the end, we use the tools we have and the skill sets we have. And uh, doing that, I've got this thing together. We got it all glued up. Um, it is ready to be surfaced. So enough of me yammering on. Um, building the router jig for planing the top and finishing the top and all that stuff should be a... Uh, another video because that's a whole lot more work so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it